Welcome back to another review. Um, I hope you've been enjoying them. Um, I enjoy doing them. It's fun. Um, on the way through the seas, I skipped a band and I thought about it today and I was like, you know what, I I'm not going to skip these guys. Even though their music isn't played much, um, well actually it is played on the radio, um, depending on what station you listen to. It's probably played on more of the easy going stations. Um, but I really like them and I, I actually still put on their music. I still listen to their music going to and from work. Um, and uh, they had a meteoric rise to fame in the 1970s. Um, <clears throat> and they're still around today. They still tour. And um, they actually toured a couple years ago with um, Earth, Wind & Fire. And I really wanted to see that show because I was kind of excited about it, but I didn't get a chance to go. Um, so depending on how old you are, um, you may have a different opinion on this band, but um, I'm going to talk about uh, Chicago. Now, Chicago started in 1967. The founding members were a trumpet player and a trombone player. And they heard a song by the Beatles called Gotta Get You Into My Life. It's off the Revolver album. If you don't know that song, please listen to it. Gotta Get You Into My Life. And it was one of the first rock songs with brass and it really um people really noticed that <clears throat> and these two individuals I, their names, names escaped me there were seven members of chicago eventually um but those guys started to put the word out in the chicago area they're from chicago and they garnered some fantastic talent to have a rock band with brass backing now the brass of course in chicago um, if you know their music um, there's a lot of it in it and it's very forward in the songs they got together some other talent um, a guitarist named um, uh, terry Kaith. now terry Kaith is a criminally underrated guitar player terry Kaith is a fantastic guitar player and <clears throat> you know he's a big part of why i like chicago they also um, garnered some more talent in a bass player named Peter Cetera. Now, Peter Cetera is a name you probably know. Um, <clears throat> Chicago's music had that really high-pitched singer. That's Peter Cetera. Um, they blended wonderful harmonies with the, uh, with the voices they had. Um, <clears throat> and eventually, it became a septet. They became um, a group of seven players. Um, <clears throat> and Chicago's music started off with their debut album, um, self-titled debut album. They were called the Chicago Transit Authority. Now, that was their first album. It didn't have any hits on it, but it did break the top 20. Um, and it broke the top 20 because of this aforementioned brass section that was very prominent. And another thing about Chicago is they fused jazz, R&B, um, blues, rock and roll, um, <clears throat> you know, big band, a little big band stuff in there. A really fantastic fusion of music that they just ran with, um, all thanks to that Beatles song, actually. It just showed what you could do with music. You could do anything in music at that point, and, uh, and they did, and they did it really, really well. Um, and uh, <clears throat> they had a number of hits um, between 1970 and 1975. Um, one of the albums I have here is a greatest hits album. Um, and um, I mean, Just You and Me, Saturday in the Park, 25 or 624. If you really want to hear a great guitar solo and how Terry Kaith is an amazing guitarist, Listen to the solo in 25 or 624. That's amazing. Color My World, Wish You Were Here, Feeling Stronger Every Day. Um, you know, it's just, just this is a fantastic album. Um, <clears throat> and as um, Chicago progressed through the 70s, um, they could do no wrong. It was hit after hit, great album after great album. They're a fantastic live band from what I've seen and from what I've heard. And there's a great documentary on Netflix about Chicago. You should really check it out. Um, now, by the time the late 70s came around, a few things started to happen. <clears throat> the most notable was that Terry Keith um, shot himself um, accidentally with one of his guns. Note to self, if you possess a gun, don't do cocaine and get drunk and play with your guns. Um, it was a tragic event, and Terry Keith was a, a driving force in that band. And when he died, um, they were never quite the same. He, he was an amazing singer too, fantastic voice. Um, and one of the guys that stepped up to take the reins was Peter Cetera. Peter Cetera, given his voice, <clears throat> um, was really suited to ballads. 
And unfortunately, in Chicago's later years, they became really known for their ballads. They became kind of known as a ballad band. And yeah, they did ba ballads in their early days, and they did them well. Um, and they did them in the late 70s into the 80s, um, and they did them well. But they became, for me, a little bit schmaltzy, a little AM radio ballady, lovey-dovey kind of a band. And they never really um, resonated with me anymore. Peter Cetera eventually left Chicago. Um, under kind of acrimonious terms. He wanted to do a solo career. He joined forces with David Foster, who's also a schmaltzy producer that produces a whole bunch of, you know, ballads and fluff. Um, and they hit it off, those two. Um, you know, I guess they figured they could have more success uh, by themselves than with Chicago. Um, and they, they did have some success. But I think the, the name Chicago will live longer than Peter Cetera. Um, don't get me wrong, Peter Cetera was a huge part of that band in terms of vocals and some of the bass work he did. He's a great bass player. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, Chicago for me is a band that, um, I love jazz, I love um, blues, I love rock. And make no mistake, early Chicago, a lot of it rocked and it was really, really cool music. Um, so check it out. I have a Greatest Hits album. Um, like I said, this is the Greatest Hits up to the Kiss came out in 75. Um, and I also have a, a box set of LPs um, <clears throat> of them um, that I've had this since I was like probably about 17, 18. Um, <clears throat> grew up in Chicago, heard them on the radio um, a lot. Um, you don't hear them as much anymore, like I said, unless it's on, you know, uh, one of the easy listening stations. Um, but a lot of Chicago, it ain't easy listening in terms of the soft balance stuff. It's a lot of energetic big brass um and that's what i miss in music today i miss brass sax trumpet trombone it's all dead and i don't know why um so anyway i just had to make a review in chicago because you know i really dig their music um and i think if you look at some of their older stuff probably between 70 and 75 um you'll you'll dig it too there, there's some really great tracks in there so anyway chicago hope you like the review and uh we'll see you next time